Hello and welcome to the CMC Market Non-Farm Payrolls webinar with me, David Madden. This is a Non-Farm Payrolls on Friday, the 4th of September, 2020. Uh, and the, the current time is 13.15 British summer time. As always, uh, if you are used to attending our webinars, you'll know uh, that will be, be the classic example of, um, of uh, g going through the, um, the risk warning screens. And from there, what we'll end up doing is uh, do the risk warnings. It's the usual standard stuff. If you watch our videos or tune into our webinars, it essentially says everything, anything that is covered in this webinar um, is only my thoughts, is only just general kind of commentary, and it's not to be construed as trading advice or explicit investment advice. And it's all fairly basic stuff. It should com com uh, keep my uh, compliance department happy and. For those of you who tune in regularly um, to our webinars or watch the videos that we uh, produce on a weekly basis, uh, it, it's all it's all stuff that you've seen before. So um, just to give you a quick outline of what I'm going to be doing, I'll talk about what's going on in the markets in general, the big indices, the big commodity, the big uh, currency pairs. Talk about the headlines, uh, and then we will talk about the numbers themselves. So uh, we've had a reasonably good. Um, we had a colossal sell-off uh, in in the in the US last night. Uh, very much tech tech led. Um, we, we saw that the, the Nasdaq 100 declined over five percent. The S and P 500 declined about three and a half percent. But we've seen a bit of a bounce back here in Europe today. Um, it's uh, things are looking reasonably cautiously optimistic. Uh, if you take a look at the FTSE 100 here, things have re recovered from yesterday, but nonetheless, there are still kind of major um, concerns out there for the sake of the overheatedness of the jobs market. Um, sorry, I said the jobs market. I got jobs figures on my mind. Um, overheatedness of the US tech sector. So I would say, I imagine today's move is probably more um, position squaring up um, rather than actual genuine belief that things are everything is a okay in relation to the tech stocks. Um, if you take a look at the price action of the FTSE 100 um, of the last few months, it's been very much in a downward trend. And um, obviously, with today's session, head, head back to uh, to lows levels last seen uh, in mid May, we have recovered somewhat. We still haven't gone anywhere near uh, back up to the pre Thursday level before the, the massive sell off, the, the, the huge sell off that we saw in the US last night, which spilled over to Europe. So we're still very much in a downward trend. We're currently trading around 5,862 in the FTSE. If the kind of wider negative trend continues, we could be looking at heading back down towards this area here, down around 5,660. Uh, any moves to the upside could run into resistance at this zone here in around 6,000. Uh, it's a big psychological number. Um, on top of that, we did previously, it has acted as both support and resistance. Um, we'll take a look now at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. It's um, it's very the DAX is in a better shape than the um than the than the FTSE. But if you take a look at the wider view, it's been a nice upward trend um the last number of months since uh in the, the lows that we saw in, in March. But if you notice, what's interesting was that <clears throat> yesterday's daily candle, this big red rectangle here, um, it's a completely well not quite but almost engulfs. It was a very bearish looking candle. It didn't quite become a fully fully bearish engulfing, but it was an extremely bearish candle. We're lower um a bit on, t on today uh, the, the, the 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 long wick on today's candle denotes indecision. So traders are still kind of up two minds which way we're gonna go. The wider upper trend is still very much intact. And if we hold above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play around 12,820, if you can hold above that, it's likely that the wider upper trend is going to continue. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards 13,200. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting um, the multi month highs, the highs that, you know, the, 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 um, the kind of set month highs that were racked up yesterday. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at potentially heading up towards 13,500. It's only really if you have a size of a break below this blue line here, the 50 moving average, could then we begin to think, you know what, maybe there's um, maybe something, maybe um, the kind of we could be looking at a, at, a, at a move lower. Should that be the case, we could then potentially head back down towards the late mid to late August lows in around 
12,629. Uh, and should we head, head below that, we could head back down towards this red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 12,193. Notice how it acted nicely as uh, support at the very at the very late July and if a metric has been important in the past it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future although there are no guarantees. Um, what I'll do now is I'll take a look at what's going on with the US markets and um, we can see here on the S&P 500 the candle yesterday is, extra, is extraordinary huge massive uh, extremely bearish candle um, completely more than engulfed um, the um, the bodies of the previous positive two days candles. Granted, the lows of today's of today's session ha are, haven't taken up the lows of yesterday. I suspect a lot of traders are going to be sitting on their hands waiting for the non-farm payroll numbers to come out. Not only do we have non-farm payrolls coming out in nine minutes, we also have Canadian jobs numbers. And if my memory serves me correct, uh, Monday next week is a is a is a is a bank holiday in both the U.S. and Canada. Uh, so therefore, we, put, we could have some some traders in North America going. We have the number job job list. We have the jobs report uh, in both Canada and US coming out. We're heading into a long weekend, so whatever moves we see post the jobs report could be of of a of, of major interest. But when you're in the eye of the storm, like last night when when we were down, finished over three percent lower on the S and P 500. There's a there are some people out there who are perma bears. You're always saying, "Yes, I knew if the crash was coming, and now it's and now it's begun." It was a colossal move to the. It was a very big move to the downside. There's no doubt about that. But let's just look how far we've travelled. You know, March in the grand scheme of things wasn't that long long ago, and the and the and the it was only you know at the end of March the S and P 500 was sub 2,200, and only during the week it was up. Um, not quite as high as 3,600, but not too far away from it. So the move to the upside has been absolutely colossal. We haven't seen any kind of proper corrections in months. Even if you take a look, even when we were kind of, um, if you take a look at the levels that we've achieved, basically, um, basically from the end, from, from, from late from late July, we were in around 3,200, and we gained almost 400 points in space of about five weeks, which is an absolutely kind of, colossal move when you think about it you know if you think 400 points as a percentage of 3200 is about nearly tw about 12 and a half percent so it's come on a huge way um and uh, uh, you know one of the biggest indices <clears throat> in the world so the broader upper trend the broader trend is still to the upside but we'll see how the job is how the numbers come in obviously if you take out yesterday's lows we can then be looking heading back towards 3400 a break below that could take us back towards the mid-August low of around 3,350. And if you have a move below that, down towards 3,326. And obviously to the upside, traders will be looking out for numbers like 3,500. And if you go beyond that, they'll be looking at retesting the recent all-time highs. So we have six minutes on the clock until um, what's, until the numbers come out. I'll chat to you about what, what, what do you kind of expect what I expect it from the numbers, and then we'll go back to more about what's going on on the indices and the reaction. Don't worry, I will be going back to indices. I will be talking about currency pairs, uh, dollar crosses, pound dollar, euro dollar, dollar CAD, and obviously, um, if ever you can hear me okay, uh, feel free to kind of type in the chat box and in a while to say that you want me to have a look at a certain currency, a certain markets, but I will be going through the big ones as well. Gold as well is another one I'll be talking about, and, and oil. So, um, a quick straw poll uh, for those of you who, who are, are signed up. How many are actually have accounts with CMC Markets? Just feel free to kind of type in the box. Um, if you are familiar with, with our trading platform, what we can see here is um, we have the on the under news and analysis. Third option down is the market calendar. This gives you the economic calendar um, of um, the basically the big events. If we could scroll down here, we can see down along here at non-farm payrolls. We're expecting 1.4 million jobs to be added. That will be a decline from the 1.76 million jobs that were created last month. On the unemployment rate, that is expected to drop to 9.8% from 10.2. And um, also keep an eye for average earnings. It's expected to fall from 4.5% to, well, fall to 4.5% from 
Um, I can't hear. Are you okay? If there's an individual there, you he he said they can't hear me at all. They may want to check your connection because they've asked. Because anything I, I can see here is um, people can people are interacting with me, so I'm afraid it must be an issue with your end. Um, excellent, you can't hear me. Brilliant. Um, non farm payrolls. Um, I suspect we're going to see something in a region of around. 1 million to 1.2 million. I think a natural tapering off in the in the in, in the in the recovery of the US economy is is likely. Um, but I, I think we're probably going to come in uh, around kind of 1 million 1.2 million. Um, why do I think that? If you take a look back yesterday um, at the ISM non-manufacturing update, we can see here um, that the employment component of that reading, if you take a look at the actual figure itself, uh, ISM non-manufacturing, which is essentially, um, which is essentially a, a services uh, update. If you take a look at the actual reading itself, um, we can see here that the reading came in at 56.9, which was a pullback from the 58.1 posted uh, in the previous month, um, which is a, still a good reading. But if you look finer down in the details, we can see here that the, the new orders in metric dropped off a fair bit. Um, but if you take a look at the, um, the employment component, it felt, went from 42.1 to 47.9. So it's moving in the right direction, but it's not really moving upwards at a fast pace. And this is the problem, sadly, the, the, the problem with the labor market. Whenever there's a downturn and things are bad, employers are quite quick to um, make redundancies or at the very least stop hiring. Um, but when things are, appear to be turning around, i.e., you know, we're seeing a recovery in the economy, they're not so quick to actually hire people back. So I think we're going to see a, a tapering off in the in the um, in the jobless rate, um, and the rate at which jobs are being created. If you take a look yesterday um, at the initial jobless claims, they were they're quite they're quite impressive. Well, in a relative speaking, um, the reading was here. It came in at uh, 881,000, um, 881,000. It was a, a nice drop on the kind of just over a million that, that were that was posted in the week before. So there were 881,000 new people signed up for, for unemployment benefit for the first time. But it's a considerable drop on the kind of in excess of 1 million in the previous week. Uh, we can also see, if you take a look at the continued claims reading, um, we can see on the continued claims front that fell to 13.25 million from 14.49 million. So, for those of the people who are already claiming an employment benefit, how many additional ones? How many, how many were still claiming? It dropped um, by over a million. So, so we, that would suggest that over a million people returned to the labour market. Um, so that, that 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 was suggest to me that things are that things are improving slowly but surely. So that's why I believe. We are going to have probably about a million or so, maybe 1.2 million created, but I, I don't think we're going to be as generous as the 1.4 million that were created in the previous month. Okay, we're coming down to 50 seconds left. Let's also for, not forget about uh, Canada. Canada have numbers coming out of half one as well. On the unemployment rate, it's tipped to, to fall from 10.9% to 10.1%. And on the employment change reading, that is tipped to cool from 418,500 down to 275,000. So they're expecting jobs to be created, but not as many as uh, originally, not as many as the previous month in July. We got 20 seconds on left on the clock. I'm going to just um, be quiet now. One point three seven million, so almost bang in line. The unemployment rate drops to eight point four percent, a larger drop than expected. The average earnings component uh, falls from four point eight percent to four point seven percent. This is looking uh, at, a quick, at a quick snap glance, a, a decent jobs report from the US. There was only a tiny revision made to the previous number of one. 0.76 million revised down to 1.73 million. 
over in Canada, the unemployment rate dropped to 10.2% down from 10.8%. Um, as I mentioned, the Canadian rate, unemployment rate, we can see here on in terms of Canada, okay, that's interesting. There were, an, an, and the Canadian employment change, uh, 245,000 jobs and 800 jobs are created. So uh, not too far away from the 275,000 that was, that was expected to be created. The unemployment rate in Canada, uh, surprisingly, fell down to 10.2%. Um, so it's actually not too far away from the original uh, ex expected. Um, just to kind of quick re re revision of the US numbers, I would suggest they're, they're quite positive, they're quite decent. 1.37 million jobs added, just below the 1.4 million that was expected. Um, in terms of the actual unemployment rate out of the US, it um, uh, the unemployment rating fell to 8.4%. That's quite decent. That's quite a large fall from the previous rating of 10.2 and much lower than the 9.8 expected. Uh, and lastly, um, we saw the oh, we saw the average earnings um, come, drop a bit down to 4.7%. So I would suggest it's a fairly good number all in all. Um, I'm guessing that it's going to be pos positive for the dollar. Let's see how it reacts on in terms of the um, in terms of the indices. I take a look now uh, at euro dollar to gauge the reaction. My guess is it's going to be dollar positive, so probably have a, a bit more additional pressure on the um, on the um, jobs on the, uh, on the on the single currency on the euro. As we can see here, so the big spike down uh, initially on the um, on the on the euro versus the US dollar. Let's see what the reaction is across other currency pairs. It's going to be the Canadian the dollar CAD is going to be interesting given that they both had pretty good numbers. I suspect that the American currency might win out, so we could see dollar CAD a bit higher. Let's see if I'm right. So we did see a spike to the upside on the initial reaction. Now the market seems to be digesting the numbers. And I would suggest this is a pretty positive report as well for equities. And go back to the S&P 500. Yeah, if you take a look at that rating initially, right on the, on the money, um, well, higher, followed by lower, we seem to be pressing higher. So it looks to be to be a, have gone down well with the um, with the U.S. equity traders. Um, what was Evan's thoughts? You know, I've given you my thoughts on the on the uh, on the on the on the, on the uh, unemployment figures. What are your thoughts? Feel free to just stick stick them into the box. What I'm going to do now is have a look at what's going on with the Dow Jones. See how that that's reacting. Yeah, we seem to be kind of pressing higher post the numbers. Let's take a look at the wider view. So, you know, yesterday on the Dow Jones, the daily cap, the, the daily chart we're looking at, very much a but a bearish day yesterday, full on bearish engulfing posted yesterday. Um, but the lows of today's session haven't taken up the lows of yesterday. Um, and we and given what we saw in the last few minutes, we do appear to be kind of nudging a bit higher. So we could see that the, the, the um, the Dow Jones continue to kind of make up for, for uh, make up for, for lost ground, given what we had uh, in terms of the actual jobs numbers. Uh, in terms of potential areas to keep an eye off or a look at, this was really the um, when we an area you, you want to keep an eye off for from from from, uh, from this morning session will be in around um, 26, 28,600 there thereabouts. That's been the kind of high of the, this morning session. Obviously, this is the futures market we're talking about. Um, if you do look to kind of break above that, that could then head us back up towards 28,800. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 29. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'll take a proper look now at the a few of the currency pairs. If there are any markets, I'll be going through euro dollar, pound dollar, and dollar CAD in more detail. I'll be taking a look at gold as well. Um, I know some of you mentioned some markets already. If there's anything else you want me to have a look at that I haven't listed, I'll happily do so. So the wider picture for euro dollar for the last few months has been very much to the upside. It was only during the week um, we actually saw. It was only during the week that we saw um, 
if a euro dollar hit a 28th month high so give an indication of how strong the euro has been against the us dollar or, or really how weak the dollar has been uh, so it's still very much in a upward trend if you take a look at the price action the last few days it has been moving lower uh, note the very long wick on yesterday's candle uh, long wicks denote indecision which is this kind of this uh, very kind of skinny line here that just that denotes indecision as uh, kind of suggesting that the markets don't know which way to turn and we haven't moved well to be honest we've, we're still sort of in the range of yesterday we haven't taken up the highs of yesterday but we're still well above the lows of yesterday so um we could see um euro dollar holder of these levels or maybe kind of drift down towards 118 but like i said this report seems to be a dollar positive so we could head a bit lower and if that is the case we can head back towards 118 if you take out yesterday's low that could potentially uh take us back down toward these 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 lows here in around one spot 1754 and if you have a decent move below that we could head back down toward this area here in around one spot 1696 but let's not forget the wider upper trend and you know i suspect if he if you hold above this area here at one spot 1696 i suspect the wider upper trend in euro dollar is going to continue let's take a look now at pound dollar yesterday or sorry not yesterday but during the week on tuesday what we saw was we saw pound dollar hit its highest level um since december uh that was actually back on the on the election night uh if you recall um we can see here that it's been in a nice upward trend the last few months for those of you who don't follow to read up on technical analysis um i would very much recommend that you do read read, in, read up on it uh that there's, there's some very useful information in there and i mentioned about the, that the long wicks a moment ago i mentioned it again you know we can see here that, that the very long wick on tuesday the first of september on the dollar on the, on the pound dollar um chart here basically denoted indecision and you know what you expect you, you hit a multi-month high and then you have a long wick is that really it's not a huge shock just to see the next day well we have a bit of a correction you know markets don't move in straight lines it's kind of one of the old adages uh, that's often gets thrown as often gets thrown about and what do you know we had a you know a move a very kind of sharp move to the upside it couldn't be held it um it closed higher on the day but it didn't close too much above where it previously opened and what do you know we had a bit of a move to the downside in the last few sessions keep an eye out for yesterday's low um that'd be the kind of first kind of port port protocol if things um continue to move to, to move south and pound dollar and if they do take out yesterday's low we could look at, uh, at heading heading back down towards um we could back, move head back down towards uh one spot 32 and if you go below one spot 32 uh we could head back down towards this area here um 130 of course it's, it's it'd be kind of big um uh, a big it could be a, it could be um a, you know it's a big kind of psychological number coming on now to dollar cad so the wider view of dollar cad has been very much to the downside we can see here basically uh, the last few months the us dollar has been getting consistently weaker um it's also on, on the flip side of this the oil market has been has, has been re, has rebounded a lot since april uh since kind of you know mid mid to late april the canadian economy is very much tied in uh with with the, um with, with the oil market because canada is, is a big uh, producer of oil so if you take a look at the price action it's heading very much south in fact yesterday it got down to around 130 a level last seen um well, way back at the very beginning of the year uh, and then of course what do you know if you look at the price action yesterday um, we have a very much a bearish engulfing uh, on yesterday's daily candle now for the kind of confirmation of that you'd want to see the market to continue to move higher we are, we are very much off the lows of yesterday but we have yet to take out the highs of yesterday so I suspect we given the job support or the two job support I suspect we could see a continuation um in the uh, in, in the move higher in dollar in, in um in dollar cad if we do press on higher from here we could be looking at heading back towards one spot 32 and a move beyond that could take us up to one spot 32.44 um move to the downside 
um, could head back down towards the kind of 130 area. And if it do head below, head south of 130, we could take us back down towards this area here in at one spot, 29.51. Um, the NASDAQ 100, keep an eye, have a look at that. This has been an absolutely phenomenal move. So we are well south of 7,000 back, um, down around 6,650 so 6, odd back in uh, the lows of March. And yesterday, or in the last couple of days, uh, we got up north, um, up around 12,400, even, even, even higher that. So it's been an absolute uh, huge move to the upside. Obviously, we've, that candle yesterday is exceptionally, exceptionally bearish. And we can see here that the lows of yes of today uh, have taken up the lows of yesterday. So things are still looking um, are look, and are, and are still looking skewed to the downside um, on on the on the, uh, on the Nasdaq 100. If you note this level here, it, which which we're um, we're basically currently at. We're not too far away from 11,000. You know, the lows of today's session have been in around 11,600. We did see a bit of consolidation in that zone not too long ago. But, but to be honest, because we have so few price points in terms of old old resistance could potentially be new support uh, in the market, it's it's um, there's not many really places we need to kind of get a, get a look at. Um, what we could see here is if we do have a decent break below 11,600, we could potentially head to this wider zone um, to 11,200 or maybe say, the high, you know, we saw a couple of highs here in around there, they're about 11,280, there, they're about down to around uh, 11,200. So that, that that zone of around 80 points or 100 points could act as, as support should we have, have, have another move to the downside. And if we go below that, we could then be taking us back toward this blue line, the 50 moving average, which acted nicely as support um, back in April. And as, as I said before, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely to be of importance in the future. But, you know, then again, um, we're still a long, long way down from the metric. And this is what it, this is what I was talking about in relation to when you're in the eye of the storm, it's difficult to go, oh, God, you know, there's a lot of talk out there that, that the, the tech bubble has finally burst. And is this, you know, the dot com boom bust all over again? You know, one of the tenets of Dow theory is that a market uh, is in a trend until you have a significant move in the opposite direction. And if we take a look at how far we've traveled in the last, in, in, you know, basically since March, you know, from time to time, you are going to have a fairly significant uh, correction. So even if you do head back to the 50 moving average, which is still, you know, the guts of 680 points below where we currently are, we would still be uh, in that wider upward trend. So that don't necessarily get to get, get in the mindset of if you do drop another few hundred points that, oh, that's it, you know, this is it. You know, we're going, we're heading back to, you know, 10,000 or 9,000 or 8,000 or whatever it is, or we're going to take off the March lows in the NASDAQ 100. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're going to see from time to time quite large pullbacks. Obviously, if it gets to a point then where you actually do um, started to have, have head back below the 100 day moving average, back below the 200 day moving average. That's when you guys might be thinking, right, maybe maybe this trend um, has a had run out of has a, is, is running out of steam. But this is the hourly chart I'm looking at here. We can see basically from like the session of the back end of yesterday and from what, what we see today, it's largely been range bound. 11,600 to, to the downside and 11,800 to the upside. Um, if we do manage to kind of break below 11.6, I've talked about the levels we could potentially see to the downside. If we head north of 11,800, you'd be kind of shaken off today's highs. You've taken out it's kind of this, this consolidation zone here. That they could take us back up to 12,000, which you know coincidentally, coincides nicely with the 100 hour moving, sorry, 200 hour moving average, this red line here, but also 12,000 itself is, is a big kind of psychological number. 
we can see on a few occasions it acted as both resistance and a support on the way up so you know it could be of importance on the way down and then if you're going to go retake 12,000 you know we could see a few a bit of consolidation broadly speaking uh in around um in in around kind of uh 11,000 um if this is on here 12,200 and then if you get back to that level we would have recouped most of the losses that we incurred yesterday and then people then probably be sort of talking again about the recent all-time highs um it was it's now 13 46 for the summertime we've, we've been this podcast being the yeah, podcast <laughs> I've been listening. I've listened to many podcasts and have them on the brain. This webinar has been going on for half an hour. Any other markets you want, you'd like me to have a quick look at? Gold. I got to have a look at gold. What's going on with gold? I suspect uh, that we're going to see potentially in for a negative day or a negative move on gold in light of what we saw with the with those numbers. Those numbers are pretty positive for the dollar inverse relationship between dollar. And um, in inverse relationship between dollar and the gold market, and what do you know? We've had, we've had a fairly decent move. Silver and oil, um, crude oil. Yep, yeah, I take a look at that. Um, uh, in terms of the price action, the wider trend uh, for gold has been very much to the upside. Hit an all-time high in early last month. Had quite a sizable sell-off here. Um, going into the middle of August, but if you take a look at the lows, the lows have been getting higher. Granted, the the highs have been getting lower as well. Um, so not not a million miles away from kind of a triangle uh, pattern for me forming, and, and that that tends to be a continuation pattern, a continuation of the of the uh, the, the previous trend. We're comfortably above the 1900 level. We're well above um, the. 50-day moving average. So I suspect we know we're going to see in the kind of in the kind of next few days the, the wider trend uh, in gold to increase. It's only really if we have a kind of very significant move to the upside in gold, sorry, in in in, in the U.S. dollar, could then we be look um, at heading back heading back down towards 1900. But even on kind of quite negative days we've seen it in the last few months, uh, we haven't really really really, really retested 1900. Uh, we've only, only only have very briefly and got that didn't even get down there. Um, if you do have a decent move below 1900, keep an eye out for this area here in at the mid August lows. In at um in at 1863. Um, any moves to the upside could um could you know, could set us back toward the September highs, the highs that's achieved on Tuesday in around. 1992 and if you go beyond that we could then be looking up towards 2000. Take a look at silver. Uh, I did a chart forum on silver just only a short while ago. For those of you who use the trading CMC markets trading um, trading platform feel free to engage with chart forum click on the forum tab here feel free then to kind of write your comment um it's a good way for kind of you know uh, us analysts to interact uh with with uh, with, 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 uh, with you guys so the, the wider trend to the up to the in play for silver is uh, is, is still very much to the upside things are looking are, are looking fairly po still looking fairly positive it wasn't that long ago. We were kind of at multi. It's only at the beginning of the month. We were at kind of multi-year highs for silver. If you could hold above this zone here in around 26, uh, it's likely that the kind of wider upper trend is going to continue. If you can head back up towards 28, you could go beyond that and then retest uh, 28.9, the recent highs, or well, the highs of Chiva of September. And then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading up towards the highs that were posted um in 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 the uh in early august which were not too far away from 30 29.85 i believe and you know keep in mind that those levels were levels last seen in 2013 and also we, i mentioned a moment ago the old adage markets don't move in straight lines this is a colossal move to the upside so the, the trend upper trend remains but i wouldn't be surprised if you see a bit of sideways trading or range bound trading for a bit, um, just because it's um, just because it is 
that level of growth can, is difficult to be sustained, to, to be perfectly honest. But at the same time, you know, the trend, the upper trend is still very much in play. Um, Euro yen. I, I, I'll take a look at Euro yen um, and then I'll be looking to kind of wind things down. Are there any other markets um, anyone would like me to have a look at, please? Just feel free to um, type away in the box. Oh, yes. Um, of course, David, don't worry. I will uh, keep an eye on that one. So nice upward trend the last month, few months on Euro Yen. The highs that we saw during the week, the levels last seen uh, well over a year ago, uh, circa kind of your 18 month highs, if not even, even longer. Copper as well. So the trend is still very much, very much to the upside. Granted, we've cooled the, the last few sessions, so it seems to me that the kind of the overall trend is the upward trend is still very much intact. If you press on higher from here, because we're currently in around one spot 2578, we press on higher from here, the February highs of 2019 in around one spot 26, spot 90. That area could be could be looked um could be, could be looked to be covered. If you go beyond that, then keep an eye out for 129 itself. Uh if you do kind of pull back from here. See, we could find some support from this zone here in around one spot 2444, one spot 2434. There's a few occasions, there's a few levels around there that acted as support. There's also a bit of support, there's also acting as a bit of consolidation in around 124. So keep an eye for that area to the downside. And if you go below that, the 50 day moving average isn't too below, too far below that in at one spot 29, one spot 2392. Uh, Take a look now at which precise to take a look copper. I'll take a look at Brent crude oil, uh, the cash market. As we can see here, um, it's had a huge rebound from the lows of April, been pushing higher. It's run right into resistance at this red line here, the 200-day moving average. On a few occasions, it's traded above it. Um, you know, we, 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 there's no denying that, but it hasn't really pressed on higher. The lows on crude oil uh, are very much higher. So if you take a look at, you know, we're seeing a series of higher lows. We're not really kind of seeing a series of higher highs. So we're not in, in an uptrend, but you know, I would still say that the bias is remaining to the upside. Oil is very much tied in about the health of the global uh, econ of the health, the perceived health of the global economy. And yes, I did mean that pun. Um, so if you do get any kind of signs that things are improving in terms of global demand, any signs of progress on the pharma front for a potential cure or even a treatment for COVID-19, that's likely to alter um, perceptions about about how, about what future demand is going to be. That's just the sort of thing which could be the next leg higher for the oil market because I don't really see OPEC plus and the likes going down the extreme cutting of production routes again. Um, so I think we could be range bound for oil in the near term. Um, but I, my, my, I, I suspect the bias is going to remain to the upside. So if you look at, if you look at getting back above the 2 day moving average, uh, we could be looking at retesting the kind of 46 area. This is obviously on the Brent crude oil cash market, cash prop, cash contract. Um, that would be kind of 46. If you go beyond that, then the kind of the next big number to look out for would be a 50 dollars $50 a barrel, um, big psychological number and all that. Move to the downside could incur, could run into support in around here. This um, the, the lows of, of uh, mid mid July into kind of late July in around. Forty-one dollars and twenty-seven cents. Forty-one, you know, forty-one dollars and forty cents. So there, thereabouts, um, we're, we're um, there, thereabouts could act as support. 
uh, I'll take a look at copper and then I look to have a, have a look at the S&P 500 again and then I'll be looking to wrap things up because we're coming up to two o'clock. So yes, this is the copper here. It was, I believe copper had a 26 month high only a few days ago. So the highs that we saw in copper during the week, yeah, with the, the highest highest seen in 26 months. So copper is very much in an upward trend. Things are still looking quite positive. If you look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retaking 300. If we go beyond 300, keep on that for the recent highs at 306. And if you go beyond that, um, 306, to be perfectly honest, there isn't really a whole lot of other area price price points to keep an eye out for. Because if you take a look at the price action back there, back in June 2018, it was very much in, in, in a downhill move. So if you go beyond three, 306, we could be like heading it towards 320 and then even beyond that up towards 330. Moves to the downside. We can see here that this is a nice example of the 50 day moving average acting nicely as support here. So if you move lower from here, we could find support from the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 287 cents per pound. And if, if we do have a move below that, we could head back down towards the um, the lows of mid, of mid mid August in around 276 cents per pound. I'll take a look now at the S&P 500 and then I'll look to wrap things up because you're coming up on two o'clock. So this is the hourly chart on the S&P 500 and obviously these are this is kind of a, an example of how the market was driving lower, trying to create new lows, but it just couldn't. Now we're not seeing much move, move much upside move, movement but the lows you've seen the last few, the last while that the last you know day last day 12 hours have been getting higher so it's, the market's trying to find a, a foundation um for me what would be more significant would be you know the high, the lower highs suggest the market that buys it to the upside but what's probably more significant would be if you actually take out the recent highs um, in around this zone here, in around uh, 34.86 there, thereabouts. And if we go beyond that, we could, we could be looking at retaking uh, the 200 hour moving average at 34.95. You know, if you, if you go back below, about back above 3,500, you know, that's that's a big number. That's something that, that the traders would be, uh, would be kind of, will it will uh we pick their interest and if we go beyond that we, this this is zone here there's a bit of consolidation in around 3510 and if you go beyond that that could be the kind of beginning of maybe we could see further gains uh being being, being made um from here um i do want to thank you uh for for tuning in to the uh to the webinar uh i do appreciate um i do appreciate your time uh for those of you who are on Twitter, uh, feel free to follow me. Um, uh, it's uh, dmadden underscore cmc. Uh, you can find me um, on the uh, on, on on Twitter. Um, obviously, um, if there's any other questions you want to fire at me in relation to what do you um, you know, I can't give advice. We definitely can't give advice. But if you want to say, David, what do you make of copper? David, David, what do you make of uh, of, of pound dollar? I'd happily um, happy to respond to you on Twitter, but once again, we can't we can't give uh, explicit advice. But I do find Twitter to be a uh, a very good source of information. So even to those who who are not on Twitter, I would suggest if you are keen about trading the financial markets, there's a lot of you know good uh, Twitter, f f you know free, reliable um, Twitter feeds out there. You know all the usual news suspects, uh, Reuters and Bloomberg are on Twitter as well. Um, luck of the Irish, exactly. <laughs> Um, thank you for listening. Um, stay safe in this COVID environment. Um, have a good trading week and good luck.